Well, I remember very clearly sitting in my office at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda when I first saw the first June 5th Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And it was at that time that I got goosebumps of anxiety that we were dealing with something that was very ominous. One week we had two cases, the next week we had four cases, by the end of the month we had 20 cases and two of them were already dead or three were dead and uh, it, it was devastating. It was during that period, 81 to 85, that it became clear that this is a virus and it had a name, that we could test for evidence of infection, that there were many infected people, we knew how it spread, and the worldwide distribution of the virus also became clearer. Now, I kind of end that period in, in mid-1985 at the first International AIDS Conference, which was held in Atlanta in the United States. For more than 25 years and in times of hope and frustration, the International AIDS Conference has played a central role in the global response to AIDS, marking the evolution of the epidemic and serving as a forum for the presentation of scientific advances and setbacks. As of the 1st of June of this year, there have been now 96,433 AIDS cases reported officially to the World Health Organization from 136 countries around the world. That's approximately double the number of cases that were reported at last year's conference a year ago. Always an important venue for the scientific community, early on the conferences also became an equally important forum for the voices of people living with HIV. On behalf of people living with AIDS in Canada and around the world, I would like to officially open the Fifth International Conference. The commitment to ensuring the active participation of people living with HIV was challenged by some countries' entry restrictions. In a unprecedented, as far as I know, sign of solidarity between the scientific side of the meetings and the patient side, there was a resolution passed that said we will not hold these meetings in any country that won't allow the patients to attend the meetings. As a result of that resolution and U.S. restrictions on the entry of people living with HIV into the country, the last conference to be held in the United States was in San Francisco in 1990. In the intervening 20 years, the conference has been held in Europe, Asia, Africa, and the Americas, shining the spotlight on the local and regional epidemics while setting the stage for the global AIDS agenda. It has played host to some of the world's most notable political and philanthropic leaders, while giving equal prominence to scientists, program implementers, and people living with HIV. Extensive media coverage has carried conference messages to audiences around the world. Nowhere was the conference's ability to shape the course of the global response to AIDS more evident than in Durban, South Africa in 2000. Through that conference, the world was finally forced to face head-on the fact that all people living with HIV, including the millions in Africa, had a right to treatment. We are never going to stop until everyone in Africa, everyone in Asia, everyone in Latin America has access to drugs. We have to rise above our differences and combine our efforts to save our people. As in Durban, the International AIDS Conference continues to be a forum for addressing the compelling issues of the day, including universal access to HIV prevention, treatment and care, and human rights protections. Our vision must be uncompromising. We want nothing less than zero new HIV infections, zero discrimination, zero AIDS-related deaths, Delegates left AIDS 2010 on the heels of important developments in HIV prevention, cure research, and human rights protections, and preparing for the return of the International AIDS Conference to the United States after a 22-year absence. IAS Governing Council decided to hold the AIDS 2012 in Washington, D.C., following President Obama's announcement that the United States will end the entry restrictions on people living with HIV. This change is a significant victory for public health and human rights. The 19th International AIDS Conference, also known as AIDS 2012, will convene in Washington, D.C. at a defining moment in the history of AIDS, 
Scientific advances over the past year have dramatically altered the landscape of AIDS. There is a renewed sense of hope and optimism that it is possible to turn the tide of the epidemic. What's remarkable about the International AIDS Conference coming to Washington, D.C. Uh, in July of 2012 is that we have the tools for the first time ever to end the AIDS epidemic. Uh, and this conference will provide us an opportunity to lay that out. We firmly believe that we're going to be able to come up with a blueprint at AIDS 2012 that truly is going to mark the beginning of the end of the AIDS epidemic. The Biennial Conference is the world's largest gathering of professionals working in the field of HIV. AIDS 2012 will bring together more than 20,000 people from up to 200 countries, including upwards of 2,000 journalists from around the world. The reason for the science and medical community to come is because we've got great new science and we need to put it into action. So we need the scientists and the clinicians and the researchers at the table with the policymakers so we can talk about the most strategic and efficient ways to put this new information uh, into action. Now that we've been pushed to where we need to be, we need to be able to maintain and sustain that advancement so that people can continue to get their medications and also get support not only from outside, from the donor community, but also from within their own countries. AIDS 2012 will also offer a host of other important activities outside the session rooms, including the Global Village. The Global Village is a phenomenal space. It's, it's dynamic, it's, it's inclusive, it's an amazing opportunity for all sorts of people and organizations from around the world to, to showcase the best things that they do. Free and open to the general public, the Global Village will be filled with performances, workshops, and opportunities to meet and learn from HIV experts and organizations from around the world. The conference's youth program includes many components and will raise the profile of youth issues and strengthen the participation of young people at AIDS 2012. As a global event, AIDS 2012 will impact communities around the world. But there's also an opportunity to really engage local leadership and multiple stakeholders in a dialogue about what's happening with HIV in your community, um, in your city, in your state, in your region, and what level of investment is needed, what type of policy change is needed, um, and how do systems need to be transformed. As a city deeply impacted by HIV, Washington, D.C. is using the conference to bring renewed energy and focus to the local response. Well, I don't think the conference could be more timely, and uh, I'm really delighted that the, that the District of Columbia has been chosen to host this conference. It's the first time in at least 20 years uh, since the conference has been in this nation. Uh, and of course, being here in the nation's capital is a tremendous honor for us and gives us an opportunity to talk about, to demonstrate what it is we are doing to combat, to combat the uh, virus. So we're taking this as an opportunity for our city, for our community, to be able to really look at HIV and AIDS and hopefully develop strong strategies or stronger strategies to actually end the epidemic here in D.C. Ending this pandemic won't be easy, and it won't happen overnight. But thanks to you, we've come a long way. And the United States is committed to continuing that progress. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. And I look forward to welcoming all of you to Washington, D.C. in July 2012. Seizing the potential to turn the tide on HIV and AIDS will require commitment and decisive action on many levels. Get involved in AIDS 2012. You can submit a scientific abstract, develop a proposal for a workshop or global village activity, get involved in the youth program, or plan a local hub. Conference registration is now open. Be a part of AIDS 2012. Together, we can turn the tide on HIV.